has joined us today for this very special course that we're running together with Africa Teen Geeks and the Department of Basic Education. And what we're doing <clears throat> is we're gonna run, we're gonna be with you for approximately a dozen sessions. And we're gonna talk about and uncover a few aspects with regards to this new exciting initiative that will enter your schools called Robotics and Coding. Uh, first, we, let's, let's do a few introductions. Uh, I'm gonna be your teacher facilitator for today. Um, and my name is Mr. A.F. Gabriel. To be so, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself uh, to, to the learners. Hello. Okay. Okay. okay, my name is Tabiso and I'll be your host. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tabiso. Um, so, since we have a, a large number of learners in the room, I don't think it will be possible for us to go through introductions. So we, I'm just going to go straight into uh, our lesson for today. Okay, guys. So we hope it's going to be exciting. We hope you're going to continue to join us for the entire course of the program and just bear with us as we unfold this exciting new initiative. Okay. Now, before I begin talking about coding and robotics, uh, I want to just share a little bit about myself. Um, so um, who am I? I am Mr. A.F. Gabriel. I am your facilitator or your teacher, whichever you want to call it. You can, you can see a, a little picture of myself there. Um, I, you can decide whether you think I, I look like a nerd or not. Um, uh, maybe maybe I, I've got Bill Gates hairstyle, um, but I don't have the, the glasses with the, with the masking tape. So, uh, you know, I think I have that going for me. Uh, I teach information technology at a high school in Durban, and I also teach maths. And I teach mostly senior classes from grade 10 to grade 12, but I do have an eight-year-old son and a 12-year-old daughter, so I am uh, not uh, without having to work with young children of your age. Um, just, I just wanted to list also a few of my passions so that you you can see that coding and programming is first on the list. You might be wondering, hey, you know, what is coding and programming? Um, over the course of this lesson, we'll, we'll talk more about that. But um, yeah, your passions are things that you do um, in your spare time. So yes, I do code and program, even if it's not for work, and even if it's not preparing lessons for school and things like that. So I do, I do enjoy, do, I do enjoy it. Um, I also do a lot of reading. And again, um, I think this room consists of grade seven. So by your age, you should be reading at least two to three books every week. So again, I want to take this opportunity to encourage all of you listening to me today to really catch up on your reading. And, and it's the holiday and it's a good time to do it. We are scientists and coding and programming falls under the sciences. And scientists have to be very well read. One of the most important things we can do is always keep up to date with the knowledge that's happening in the scientific world out there. We cannot be behind the times with what's going on in the technology world. You need to know what the new devices that are out there, um, the new technologies, all of that can happen if you read often. There's lots of magazines and articles and books you could find about what's happening in the technology world. I also enjoy uh, music. And of course, I had to put this on my list. Teaching is one of my passions. It's something that I've been doing for a long time. And uh, I am not sad in my job. I actually, uh, I, I actually enjoy working with young people. And I do uh, enjoy my work as a teacher. Okay. So that is me. And uh, I'm glad to be part of this program. And I do hope that as we go through the next 12 days or 12 or so lessons together, uh, that you, I would have taught you something special about coding and robotics. Okay, um, as I go along, I will give you an opportunity to interact and ask me questions uh, when the time is right. If you are confused about anything or not sure what's happening, 
you may raise your hand and to be so will let me know and I will give you an opportunity to do that. However, I would prefer not to have too many questions during the course of the, it may just be a bit interrupting. So uh, periodically as we go through the lesson, I'll give you a chance in which you can ask me something. Okay, so let's get on with why you came here. Coding, program, programming, apps, and robots. What are these things? That is really what we're going to talk about. Coding and programming and robotics. Now, let's ask this question. What is coding and programming? The answer? It is writing instructions to create an application, which is, um, I think you're all familiar with the abbreviation that we use for application, app. Some people don't even know that an app, the full word is application. So if you didn't, now you know. All right, let me just say that again. So we, we're writing instructions to create an application. Now you might know of an application if you have a phone and all of you have a device that you are using to listen to me right now. So this device will have some apps on it. It might be a phone or a tablet or a computer. And I think almost everyone is very familiar with the apps in the Play Store um, of their phones. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little picture up there. If you've ever went into the Google Play Store, you might see a picture of something like what's just popped up on the right-hand side of the screen. And you'll see um, all sorts of, there's lots of applications on the Google Play Store, but I know you all, I know most of you, you'll only go to the game section, right? You've only went to the games and you've downloaded games to your device. In fact, I think on this screen, there's a little bit of games. I can see Uno there. And all those little pictures, they are called icons. And then you select the game that you want and then you install it, download it to your phone, install it. And once it's installed, you can click on it and then you can open it and you can play the game. But a game doesn't just automatically work by itself. Somebody had to write the instructions so that the game responds to when you, you know, press the keys, move something forward or back and, and you have to press buttons or touch your screen to do things while you're playing this game. Now somebody has to code that, somebody has to program that into the application so that it works that, that way. And of course, to, to design applications on, on your phone device is, is not a very easy thing, not something that you will do at this level at grade seven. But in actual fact, what we are planning to do with this course is start the process. This is where it starts. You're not gonna be able to design game applications on the phone just straight away, but you have to start somewhere and this is the beginning for you, coding and programming. Now, what else is programming and coding? Not also just for writing instructions for applications, but writing instructions for electronic devices to follow. So you can actually give uh, instructions to an electronic device. Now, I'm sure some of you must have gotten a remote control thing. Well, the cars are most popular, but there's so many remote control toys that you can get now. And I think the car being the most popular is the reason I chose the car. So if you haven't seen a remote control car, I've put a little picture on it for you to see. Now, if you look at that picture on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, you will see the car. And on the, on the top left-hand corner, you will see what? What do we call that? It is called the controller. And this is a radio control car which means if I can just use my mouse to show you, if you, um, if you look at the remote control, you'll find that it communicates with the car using a radio signal. And back in my day, we didn't have these types of things. We didn't have this type of remote control. We had to, uh, there was a cord attached to it. So when you are controlling your car, you had to run with it. Um, and, and follow the cord. Now you don't have any cords and uh, the controller is uh, uh, controlling the car using a radio signal. If you can see on the, there's those little red buttons there. On the left-hand side, if you press the button up, it will make the car go forward or you could press the button down and the car would reverse. And then of course, on the other side, on the right-hand side of the remote control, you got left and you got right. So this controller gives instructions to the car. The car responds 
based on what the person presses on the remote control, but somebody has to design the remote control. Inside the remote control is a circuit which is following a set of instructions. Who put those instructions there? Programmers, you and I. So we are beginning to teach you the idea of how we can create a series of instructions that we can put onto devices like this so that we can control them. And that's really essentially what robotics is talking about. Robotics are electronic devices like cars and, and, and um, uh, cake mixes and all these electronic things that has a controller and we wanna give instructions to it uh, with a controller. So that is uh, the whole concept. There's a lot more to it than just what I'm saying. I'm just giving you a very rough idea for now. But when this course begins in schools and it's going to start rolling out in 2021, and I'm not sure if you're going to be in a school that will be starting to introduce it. But once you meet your teacher, um, they will give you a full rundown of everything that's going to happen over the course of the year. This two weeks with me is intended to just whet your appetite, just like introduce you to the idea of what all this is about and how lucky you are to have this as part of your school. Okay, at this point, before I go to the next thing, um, is there anybody that might wanna ask me anything? Hello. Okay. Hi. Hello. To be so, anybody, anybody need to ask me something? Can I move on? Now they they explain to us the concept of coding and stuff. You want me to explain the concept of coding again? Okay, uh, I'm just, I'll just repeat that last one. Um, coding is when we actually write instructions to control an electronic device. So basically what coding is, is a series of instructions. Now, you may want to know, you, you may be wondering, well, how do you give those instructions? Well, you have to learn how to, um, you have to learn a programming language. For you as a student, you'll be learning another language. So you can, you have a language which you speak when you're talking to your friends and your family. But if you want to be able to write instructions for a controller that's going to control a robotic device, you will have to learn a special language that will give those instructions. So here's the good news. A part of this course that you're gonna share with, with me, um, I'm going to introduce you to that language. We're gonna start from the very beginning as if you never saw it before, you don't know what to do. And we're gonna start right from the beginning and we're gonna show you how you can create these instructions. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Then I'm gonna teach you a concept first. Now, I know you're all excited and you wanna just give instructions, but you can't start there. You can't just jump into being giving instructions. You have to also understand a lot about what this is, what, what this is all about. So I'm going to, there's a word on the screen, okay? And I first, before I say anything, I, want, I wonder if anybody have, have ever seen this word before and if you might be able to pronounce it. What I wanna do is, uh, to be so, I want to give people a chance to, to attempt to respond to me by attempting to pronounce this word for me. So is there anybody who would like to, uh, would like to try to pronounce algorithm? To be so, you can unmic somebody if they'd like to try and say it. Okay, there's uh, there's there's Donald. Donald wants to wants to try to be. Donald, would, would you like to say that again? Algorithm. 
Hey, well done. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Well done. Well done. Okay. Now, for those of you who didn't get it, the word is algorithm. It's a very funny sounding word, but I've got a, I've broken it up into little parts to help those of us who are uh, not quite comfortable pronouncing. I remember when I first heard this word, I first heard in grade 10, and I couldn't say it for just the first few times. So the word is algorithm watch. L. So you say L, then go, then rhythm. So let's look at those three phrases again. L, go, rhythm. Algorithm, algorithm. Okay, now, what on earth is that? Funny sounding word, what does it mean? What is an algorithm? Well, here is what an algorithm is. It is a set of instructions that we must follow in order to achieve a specific result. Okay, let's read that again. A set of instructions that we must follow in order to achieve a specific result. Sounds like a lot, but let's, let's explain it simply. Now, you know, some of you may have used some algorithms and maybe you didn't even know that you did. You know that? Maybe you didn't know it was called an algorithm, but I'm sure every single person listening to me today would have used an algorithm at some point or other in your life. Watch this. Have you ever followed a recipe for anything? Maybe you were baking a cake or you were making something in the kitchen. Let's look at the example that I put here. A recipe is actually an algorithm. Firstly, it will have what we will call ingredients. Look at this one. This is a nice cake recipe. Now, you know, at the end of the session and some point in the afternoon, all the slides will be made available to you um, to download. And the good news is um, you'll have a bonus um, recipe in here. Maybe, maybe you can sneak in and bake this cake in the kitchen and surprise your mother. So here it is. These are the ingredients. The ingredients are the things that you would need. Um, now, I, we're not worried. This isn't a lesson about how to bake a cake, but let's just look at the kinds of, they give you a list of things you will need. Flour, you need some sugar, cocoa powder, baking powder, salt, um, buttermilk, some eggs, vegetable oil, baking soda, coffee. So these are all the things. So what the algorithm is saying, well, if you want to use this recipe, you need to get all these things. You can't just start following these instructions because when it says you need baking powder and you can't find it, well, then you're stuck and you can't finish the, the, the baking. So the reason why they give you a list of ingredients is so you make sure you have them. So what you do before you start following the instructions is you'll go out and do your shopping and make sure you've bought all these things that you have. And what is the next step? The next step is the actual instructions. Can you see that word there? Instructions. And there's bullets there. You feel, and, and if you don't know what a bullet is, it's just a little black dot that, dot that marks off each point so that you can see the difference between each of the instructions. And if you count the little dots on the left-hand side here, there are five instructions, which means this, this cake can be baked in five steps. Step one, sift the flour, the sugar, the cocoa, the baking soda, the baking powder, and salt into a mixing bowl and mix. See, that instruction makes sense now because you already know the list of ingredients. So you know what they're asking for. Everything on that list was already on the previous list, the ingredients list, okay? Then next step, in another bowl, combine the buttermilk, the oil, the eggs, and the vanilla. So it's the next instruction. And then the third one, and let's not waste time because again, this is not a uh, cooking class or baking class, it's a coding class. But this, I'm using this example so you can understand what it is to follow a set of instructions. Now, some of us, we've never baked before. Like my wife is a very good baker and my daughter who is your age also can bake, but I, I'm very, very bad. And, and if I had to bake, I would need, to, I'll put this page right in front of me in the kitchen and I'll be looking at each instruction and reading it for like four or five times and then I'll try and do it. But even me, if I follow these steps, even without knowing what's really happening, in the end, I will get that. A nice, beautiful uh, birthday cake. So 
that's what an algorithm is, a series of instructions. And when you follow them, you get a result, even if you've never done it before. How many of us have tried a recipe for the first time? You still get the product. Maybe it's not perfect and practice will get it better each time, but the algorithm does help you to be able to do something that you couldn't have done or learned to do by yourself without the instructions. Okay, now, what about some other algorithms? My son, I, I spoke about my daughter who likes baking, but then I have a son who is eight and he loves making things out of paper and uh, we call it paper craft, but it actually was pioneered by the Japanese people. So the name for it in Japanese is origami. I don't know if any of you heard of origami, but origami is the art of making things out of paper. Now, again, I, say, I said to you that some of you must have used an algorithm before, and you might have even taught an algorithm because there are some origami things. And I know there are two things that we made, even though we didn't have a, a, you know, the books, you must have made a paper jet, right? Come on. Some of you must have made a boat. You know the boat? So, um, and those two things. And then, you know, when your friend sees your jet, he'll say, hey, hey, how did you make that? Can you show me? And then what do you do? You say, fold the paper like this, and then you turn it over, and then you fold it, and you're going to give him, what are you giving him? You are giving him instructions. You are follow, you're giving him step by step what to do so that in the end, he will also be able to make the jet. And that is an algorithm, those instructions. Look at some origami that I've put on here for you. Um, I'm just looking at my mouse, right? You can see my mouse pointer. This one here, this orange thing is a very common jet that we've all made in school. You're probably making this when you were in grade one or two. And of course, this is the very famous boat. I think we all know how to make the boat, but, but, but these other ones, look at these. These are very complicated ones. I'm sure that there's very few of you listening to me right now who can make these ones. I mean, look at that, that is an elephant. Wouldn't you love the instructions? to be able to make that one? Well, if you want to learn how to make that elephant, you will have to find an algorithm, of course, which is a set of instructions, steps that you must follow in order, one at a time. And when you finish this, the last step, you would have made the elephant. Sorry, I don't have that one for you. You have to, you can probably Google if you really want to. Uh, you can get all these shapes on Google, on YouTube, or um, on the internet, you should find, find some algorithms, steps that you can use in order to make these wonderful looking, um, well, paper things. Okay, now, again, before I proceed to our next thing, are there, I'm going to pause to check if anybody might want to ask a question about what I was saying about algorithms. Okay, if, if you want to ask something, I'll just give everyone a few moments to raise your hands. And then um, if, if everybody is happy and we followed all that, we can move to our next slide. Okay. Okay, guys, um, I've just been looking at your chats to see if there's anything, but looking good. All right, now I want to start you off on an algorithm. We, we are going to design an algorithm of our own. What's gonna happen in this lesson is we're going to, we're gonna start with an algorithm that we are familiar with. And in our next lesson, which I think will be tomorrow, we will then create an algorithm that will actually give an instruction uh, on a computer screen using a programming language. Exciting, isn't it? So we don't want to just jump into that today. First, I must get you to understand, it's very important for you to understand the idea of an algorithm and how we can create an algorithm. So I chose this one because you guys are in grade sevens and I think at your age by now, some of you must have flown a kite in your life or you might have even with your dad or your mom made your own kite. And I know some of you are so innovative, you might not even need your parents' help. You might be able to even make a kite all by yourself, okay? So, so we, we're gonna design an algorithm to make a kite, but first let's define a kite so everybody knows what we are talking about when we say kite. I've got a pic some pictures of a few kites, okay? 
Um, here's one. Nice looking one, eh? Here's another. That looks like a big, what's that? Like a jellyfish in the sky. Here's another one. Very famous, what they call the Chinese box kite. It's actually like a box. And look at this one. We've all seen those at the beachfront. When we go to the beach, this, you actually need two hands to control that. And it's so powerful, it can lift you off the ground. And in this slide, this is, you know, a whole sky full of kites. Look at this one in the front. It's so big and round. Now, the reason I put all these pictures in here is because when you say kite, different people will think different things. And, and who knows, maybe if you're a Chinese person, you would have thought about the box kite when we said kite. But there is a standard thing that, you know, South African children always think of when we say kite. And that is this. Okay, this is what we call a standard diamond shaped kite. So can you see, even when we, when we talk about an algorithm, remember, which is giving instructions and we want to give instructions to make a kite, we ourselves in creating the algorithm will have to know what actually, what type of kite we are actually instructing people to make. There are so many different types of kites. So make sure your algorithm is very clear. We will say how to make a diamond shaped kite so that they know, well, this algorithm is not going to make for you a Chinese box cut. So let's do this together now. Okay, now let's think about um, making the kite. And I, I, want, I want you to try and help me now. I, I need all of you in the room to help me make the kite, give the instructions. What's the first thing that we might want to do? I, I've already got something set up and the, sometimes the order is not so important. But I'm going to listen to you and see what you say. And then I'm going to show you my instruction, right? If you want to make it differently, that's okay. But, but I'm just going to show you my instructions. But I want to hear what you guys have to say, right? So come on, talk to me, guys. What is going to be the first step to making the kite? What's the first instruction anybody would like to share? Okay, nobody. Okay. Um, I'm just browsing through your chats and see some of you know about Python. Some of you have some information about um, programming languages. Very interesting. Um, I, I will mention the programming language we're gonna use towards the end of this class. Um, for those of you who are talking about Python, Python, will be introduced to you um, in grade eight, I think, eight and nine. Eight and nine will be Python. Okay, so since nobody wants to help me build the kite, let me share my first instruction. Number one, we'd have to cut the paper into the right shape. And that is the diamond shape. And here is perhaps you, you're giving this instruction, right? So you're saying to the person, you cut your paper into a diamond shape and you can even in your algorithm, you can add a little diagram like so, so that the person knows, okay, right. And my algorithm is not including measurements um, because any diamond will be fine. But, but if you want to be specific and you want to you feel that specific size of the kite is, is going to make the best possible kite, then even in the step, you can say, cut the paper into the diamond shape and you can give the measurements of the of the four sides to your shape, okay? So step one, the person can see it, can understand it, can read it, and the paper is cut into the diamond shape. And they can follow that, and they, your picture is gonna be very helpful. I think everybody will be able to follow that instruction, okay? Now, I'm gonna pause here just to mention also that um, your instructions have to be clear. You see, it's important that a person can follow an instruction. The, the instruction mustn't lead to a question. Like, um, 
and then you know, that means your instructions are not clear. And if you give unclear instructions, can you imagine trying to give a, 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 an electronic device an unclear instruction? If your instructions are not clear and you press forward on the remote control, the car might not even go forward because your instructions were poor. So can you see why we're teaching you about how to give proper instructions so that when we are writing code to control the robot, we are already trained to be very clear with our instruction. So cut the paper into a diamond shape. Instruction number two. Um, yes, we, we are going to make a cross with the sticks, right? Um, I noticed somebody also commented that we would require materials, just like the ingredients. Yes, I, I didn't put that into this part of um, the instructions because I'm only looking at the algorithm, which is the set of instructions that we follow. So as you go through this, you will you can see the kinds of materials that we would we, we would need to gather um, in order to actually make the kite that we're needing. So we were going to need paper, and we're going or or whatever or plastic even if you were using plastic to cut out. And then of course we will need some sticks or some bamboo. And then we can follow instruction number two, which says make a cross with the sticks. And again, if you look at the image on the screen, you will see uh, we've also provided a picture so that the person can follow. And you'll see there's a measurement there as well. And we haven't put one for the other crossbar, but we can add one here so that the person can see um how long that should be uh, of course they will be able to um match the length of it part of your instruction could be to tell them to cut the sticks so that they fit across the length and the breadth of your diamond shape because they might not have cut it the same size so that they could follow that instruction and get the bamboo sticks in the correct size and so uh, you you ask them to make a cross and stabilize it in the center. Here it's done with a little bit of uh, uh, special glue to hold it together, but you can uh, give an instruction to shave it and fit them in or even tie them with string. Okay, now let's go to our third instruction. What do you think we could do next? Uh, what's the third one? What's the yes. one? I'm listening. Hmm? What's the third one? What's the third instruction? Yes, uh, someone is, is someone wanting to ask a question? What? Uh, so yes, I'm listening. Um, you is it fine that okay? The, the step three is um, you can fold the kite. Is that the correct instruction? We haven't gotten to step three yet. First, we just uh, instruction one. I'll go back to that instruction. We just cut the paper into a diamond shape. So you've got your paper or maybe plastic or anything. And then your second step was to make a cross stick, cross with the with the sticks or the bamboo. Those are the two instructions we gave so far. Oh, okay. okay. Now remember, your instructions may be different. You might have extra steps. You might try to explain more. All that is fine. In fact, one of the most important things to note about an algorithm, and let me clear this up now, since you asked the question, um, there is no such thing as a, as, a, as a correct or incorrect algorithm. There's only what we would refer to as a good or a bad algorithm or a better algorithm or the best algorithm. So for some people who require lots of instructions, they might interpret that to be a very good algorithm. But then again, you can get some people um, that when, when you give too much instructions, they find it irritating and annoying. And they will say, oh, this is a bad algorithm. So can you see it's all, it's up to the designer of the product, what kind of algorithm is going to in, be included for the instructions. Because in some, for example, um, when you say, uh, make a cross with sticks or bamboo, you, already, you expect to already know that uh, people know what a cross is and they already know what bamboo is. You see, you're not going to explain to them what is a stick. So algorithms can be included, 
you can include all those things and then you get a longer algorithm with more instructions, but some people will like that and some people will not like that. So you have to choose a basic kind of middle ground and, and, and create your algorithm on, on that basis. But if something's missing, it doesn't mean the algorithm is wrong. It just means that it, it's maybe not fully clear. And then some people won't even complain about that. Okay, so let's go quickly to our kite algorithm. So first we said, cut the paper or the plastic into a diamond shape. Then you, with the bamboo, you, you make the little cross section and the cross, and there's some measurements included. And step three, we lay the sticks onto the plastic or paper. And here's a little picture to show what happens next. So once you lay that down, and again, you can include instructions on how to lay it down. See, this is just saying lay the sticks down. Um, it doesn't say, the algorithm doesn't say how to put it there. So perhaps the person would use tape. Perhaps they would tie the sticks to the, to the, to the plastic with, um, with string. So again, you can include that as part of instruction to make your algorithm clearer. But even in this picture, you could see that the kite is starting to take some shape. And it's just two things. All we've our two instructions were cut the plastic or the paper correctly and make the cross stick, make the sticks. And now here we are putting the sticks onto the paper. So it's a very simple kind of kite, not the complex one. So now we've got this and it's looking like this. And what else are we going to put into the kite? What, uh, what will be our next um, instruction? you think? I'd like somebody to help me now. Hmm. Yeah, because we have to try to figure out. OK, Trevor has raised his hand. Um, to be so you can unmute Trevor. Yeah. Okay. Is, is, that, um, is that Trevor? Yes. Hello, Trevor. How are you? Hello, sir. I'm fine. Good. What What do you think we should do next? Well, I think you have to um, put a string on the kite. A string? Yeah. yeah, to tie the string onto the kite. Okay. So which? what will the string be doing? For flying it, you mean yeah. the string for flying it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Yes, we're going to have to do that. Um, okay. I'm going to I'm going to reveal my fat instruction in a moment. Uh, okay. Other people have got their hands up. Let's see what else other people might want to say. Um, unmute somebody there for me to be so I got, I can't see names from where I am. You will have to tie the string at the bottom of the kite. Ah, and what's that for? For control. Right, very, very, very good. For stability, for stabilizing. Okay, thank you so much. Um, okay, now Trevor said tie the string for, for flying, right? You could do it in any order. So another thing you will notice about algorithms is sometimes the order of the instructions will matter and sometimes the order won't matter. Now, for example, you can't put the bamboo onto the paper if the paper hasn't been cut first. So the first instruction to cut is an important one. But here, if we tie the string to get ready to fly the kite first and then attach the, the stabilizer, the order of those two instructions is not so uh, important. They could work in any order. Now, let's see what I have done uh, with the kite in this image here. Um, okay, let me just show that. Okay. My um, fourth instruction is the arrow marks the spot where you attach the tail. Now you said um, control. Generally what we add to a diamond shaped kite is a thing that we call a tail to assist with control. Right? It's what we call a stabilizer, um, and it helps to weight the kite down so that it um, does not spin out of control in heavy winds. 
right? And they say, look, my instruction says you could add a piece of light material. So it, obviously you don't want the, that to be too heavy because uh, it will obviously prevent the kite from rising or flying high enough. And of course, together we've got a little picture. So the instruction says the arrow and in that picture on the screen, you can see there's an arrow that is pointing to the correct part of the kite. Remember the diamond shape of a kite does not is, is, is not a perfect square. You'll get one sharper point and one more shallow point. So the shallow point is the area where you will attach the stabilizer, something which we are now at this point calling a tail. Um, when we were kids, we used to cut up our old cotton shirts um, that, we, that we were no longer using and tie them together. And then we will attach a few pieces first and we'll try to fly the kite. And if it's not stable enough, we bring it down and we add another little piece. And you can keep doing that to your tail until you find that your kite is stable enough, especially if you want to fly it very high. And you can see in this image here, this picture, there is a uh, um, nice looking tail that's been attached to this particular kite. And that is our fourth instruction. Okay, so I'm not gonna ask about the fifth one because Trevor already uh, answered that question for us with regards to adding the cotton. And on the fifth and final step, um, at the point where the sticks cross, and there's a thumb, and I'll show you the picture in a moment, you tie the cotton that would be used to fly the kite. And let's have a look at the picture. Right, so in the diagram, the person's thumb is placed on the cross section, uh, clearly indicating to the person who is following the instructions where to tie the string. So you'll just tie up your string on that central part. And at that point, um, you, you, you can um, be ready to fly your kite. So uh, those were the five instructions. And at the end of this set, you will have a kite, the paper, the bamboo that's been placed on it, um, the cross section, and the attachment of the tail, and then the fifth step, tying of the string that we'll be using to fly the kite. And of course, step six wouldn't be so much of a step at all, just to say, happy flying. Okay, so do you think now after having listened to these six very simple instructions on how to fly a kite about the importance of an algorithm? At this point, I want to ask you as learners to comment on the, these instructions. Uh, what do you think if anything is missing from them? What do you think if, if, if anything should or could be taken out? Let's hear some of your thoughts on, on, on those ideas. Anybody? Okay. Claire says she's going to name her kite Emirates. Corbin says it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Corbin. I kind of think it's okay, but it's certainly not perfect. Ah, okay. Um, if I got the name right, Asim says uh, maybe some decorations and colors. Yes. Of course, it's a very boring black looking kite, isn't it? Perhaps you might want to uh, stick some glue paper onto it and just make it nice and fancy. Of course, you've got to be careful not to make it too heavy. Okay, well, um, hello, yes, uh, it's, is it Donald again? Decoration okay, to be is missing. Uh, what's missing? Decoration. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you so much. I did, uh, I read that in somebody's chat and I did share with everybody, yes. Um, Decoration. Now let's let's talk about that. I, I like that you brought that up because you said decoration is missing. Now, now remember the algorithm is what? To make and fly a kite. And if you look at it very carefully, the, the algorithm has accomplished its purpose. You see, decoration is not a necessity for any kite to have. It's nice. It makes the kite look nice, but it doesn't affect whether the kite has been correctly or incorrectly made or whether it will or will not fly. You understand? So can you see how interesting 
this design of algorithm is. When somebody looks at decorations, we will look at additional things that we can add to the algorithm to make things look better. And so those are choices that we have to make. One of the challenging things you will find when you become a programmer is making those decisions. You will be challenged to make decisions that will uh, enhance your instructions. But remember, every time you add something to an instruction, like decorations and whatever and things like that, in the real world, that, that adds to cost. Um, and remember, if you are going to be writing code to, dis, to give instructions to electronic devices like cars and robots and things, uh, the more you add to the robot, the more you design it, the more expensive it's going to be to sell. The more instructions on the controller, the more expensive the controller is going to be, which is why you'll find that some of the cheap remote control cars just got forward, back, left, right, finished. That's your four instructions. And it's a cheap controller to make and it's easy and it'll sell well and you're targeting an audience that will be able to afford it. But of course we can add a controller that, and you've seen those wonderful cars that, that can do the stunts and it can have a flip function and it can uh, roll onto its back or it can twirl. Uh, you, can, you can have the wheels controlled separately and, and then all of a sudden 200 then becomes 1,500 then if you want to buy that. So can you see? Designing algorithms is not just a simple thing. Uh, there are lots of people involved, lots of meetings, lots of discussions that take place before we, the company will eventually decide, okay, these are the instructions that we are going to give for this particular thing. Okay, so that's, that's more or less what an algorithm is, a series of instructions um, that we are going to follow and we will be able to control or give instructions to a device in that particular scenario. Now, that's really all I wanted to share with you today. And, 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 and I, I hope it wasn't uh, seeming boring to you because it, it, we didn't really get to the coding or the aspect of programming, but we are going to do that. If you look at your screen right now, you will see that our next lesson is going to be on what we call block-based programming using MS Zora. And so we will actually be doing some instructions in our, in our next lesson. But I did need to set up the whole idea. You can't give instructions without knowing what an algorithm is. So when we start our next class, everybody who's joined us today will already know what an algorithm is. And we are going, everything we do is going to be an algorithm. We are going to create an algorithm to give uh, an instruction. Now, for those of you who want to explore MS Zora, you'll see on the bottom of the screen, msora.co.za, which is uh, the platform that we are going to be using directly online in order to teach you. Some of you might want to, I put it up today because you might want to go in and experiment with it. In our lesson tomorrow, we will begin by uh, going to this website and you'll have to create for yourself an account. Um, which you can use so that the website recognizes you and you can save your, your, all your programs and keep them there as well. And I will go through the process of how to create account on my, on my screen so you can follow it, do it, create your own account. And then after that, I will start teaching you how to use uh, those instructions. So the platform is called MS Zora. Now I'm just gonna put it on my screen and I might have it opened um, if I didn't close it up. Uh, just so that you can see it. And we will maybe, um, it's not showing on my screen. Oh, here we are. Um, okay, no, I did, I closed it up. Okay, no, it's, what's this here? Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, so, um, at this point, before I just as this MS Zora screen starts to open, uh, are there any any questions? I'm going to just uh, basically the lesson for today is complete. I wanted to share with you what really a little bit of a very mild idea of what coding and programming is, um, and I also um, wanted to show you um, what an algorithm is. And now that you have those two ideas, um, we, we will go into 
how we code in an actual um, language from tomorrow. So my question, um, sorry, yeah. So now um, are there any questions about uh, our lesson today? If you look on your screen now, you'll find, um, just, just to give you a little look as to what you will be seeing tomorrow when you open up the MS Mazora block-based programming. Uh, those little blocks are our instructions and this little guy on the right-hand side is going to be our robot for our lessons for tomorrow. So it looks very, maybe it looks really scary and funny. Some people have said they've seen Python and they've seen coding before. So this will be familiar to you. Remember, we are assuming that, that you don't, that you haven't seen coding or programming before. We, we, we can't teach from a point where people already know programming, then we will uh, lock out everybody else who has never done this before. So yeah, that's all for tomorrow. So I'm, I'm gonna sign off for today. I'm, I'm done. I want to thank you so much for uh, listening to me and sharing this time with me. Um, and I know that once we start MSORA, you're going to be very excited as we build these little programming box to do some exciting things. Before I sign off, I'm going to give you a chance to ask me any questions that you might want to ask. To be so, everything okay? Anybody want 